Hi, everyone. Hello again. We're doing part two of the Proclaimers book. And I think it's good to ask the question at the beginning of our traversing this book, what is this religion about? And if I could sum it up in a sentence, that would be the one. <laughs> the one they've chosen. Jehovah's Witnesses, Proclaimers of God's Kingdom. But, of course, the emphasis, as you can see in the typeface of the title, is on us, the religion. Mm -hmm. And I think when you look at the contents of the book, you realize that that's the story they're telling here. Now, you would say, well, it's a history of the organization. Mm -hmm. That's right, it is. But that organization has transitioned so many times in the 140 years, in so many ways, and yet that theme has re remained consistent. Mm -hmm. We're selling a religion. At the beginning, it looked relatively modest because it was about, well, it was about one man, so it wasn't modest in that sense. But it wasn't a religion yet. It didn't have a brand. Now it has a brand, thanks to the second president, J.F. Rutherford. Mm -hmm. Here's here's the contents of the book anyway, this, the seven sections of the book, the way it's broken down. Look for what's missing. The first section is, You are my witnesses, says Jehovah. The second section is gaining accurate knowledge of God's word and applying it. The third section, an association of brothers. Fourth, proclaiming the good news in all the inhabited earth. Five, kingdom preaching furthered by production of Bible literature. Sixth, exposed to reproaches and tribulations. And seventh, a people distinctively his own, zealous for fine works. Even when you look at the titles, you realize that there's, hey, God gets in. He's, you are my witnesses, says Jehovah. And then he's in the second section, gaining accurate knowledge of God's word. Mm -hmm. The next two are just about the proclaiming and the proclaimers, though. And then there's kingdom preaching by Bible literature. God gets back in in section 7, though. Just a, a people distinctively his own, zealous for fine works. So he's more of a supporter. He's got a supporting role. So even Jehovah is a supporting role to the publicity about an organization to whom you must attach yourself if you're going to be saved. Mm -hmm. And even verse, even the seventh section, a people distinctively his own, zealous for fine works. Well, that's a... That's a paraphrase of Acts 15, the, the organization or governing body chapter, right? And if you look at that chapter, you realize the his in that chapter, the name in the book of Acts, is not the name Jehovah. Mm -hmm. It's the name of Jesus Christ. And you said, well, what's missing here? Yeah, Jesus isn't in any of those headings. And yet he's supposed to be the, the basis of the good news. So when Christ is completely absent, even from your titles, and from the title of the book, you realize you're not talking Christianity anymore. Now, any witnesses watching this or people with leftover affection for the tower mm -hmm. will we'll deny that and say we are a Christian religion. We do talk about Jesus. But all the religions out there talk about Jesus, including Islam. So the fact that you mention Jesus and put him in a supporting role, doesn't yeah. that definitely disqualifies you from yeah. being Christian. What is, what is the way in which the New Testament talks about Jesus. What is the emphasis and what is the, uh, you know, what is the positioning of Jesus compared to the Watchtower? That's well, what you should look at. Even the stats that we've mentioned this before, even in the New World Translation, the name mm -hmm. of Jesus occurs four, more, four, four times as often as the name Jehovah does. And even though they've added the name Jehovah 237 times, they haven't managed to change the emphasis of the New Testament. But what has been consistent, as I said, is that for five generations now, 140 years, they have been proclaiming themselves, mm -hmm. even in that word anointed that you bandy about so much when you're a witness, is the claim, the exclusive claim that you have an anointing, that's the word Christ after all, mm -hmm. you have a, a Christ running your organization that nobody else has. And one thing they do have in common, all the, the five leaders, is times and seasons. Yeah. They've always been emphasizing times and seasons. So through the first 40 years, up until the death of Pastor Russell mm -hmm. and beyond, the end of World War One, times and seasons was the complete emphasis. Mm -hmm. 
when Russell died, things started to transition a little bit. It became about a new time and season, which he hadn't publicized, 1925. Mm. But when that passed, the emphasis had to change. The, it looks like that that was the psychology of J.F. Rutherford at the time, that we've got to get rid of that Russellite badge. That's what most of the worldlings were calling the Bible students at this time, Russellites. Mm -hmm. With good reason, because they advertise, advertise, him. advertise, that campaign that they're so famous for, and they're still publicizing to this day. And up until then, they considered him the sole FDS, the sole slave. Source of, slave. of meat in due season. That was the official teaching during the advertise, advertise campaign mm -hmm. in the early 20s. But they were selling two sets of books now. They were selling Russell's original six, plus what they called the seventh volume of the Studies in the Scriptures, which wasn't really by Russell, but called Post Posthumous Work of Pastor Russell, mm -hmm. with a lot of quotes from his books, mind you. The seventh volume, The Finished Mystery, and Masterminded, we should add by Rutherford himself, that particular volume. Mm -hmm. And then they were selling Rutherford's book, Millions Now Living Will Never Die, right. with the emphasis upon the new date, 1925, so when that date passed, it looked like a good propaganda move to get rid of the Russell thing completely. Yeah. And, and then, so they did. And then he produced a book a year, basically. Yeah. With, with his name on it. So by 1928, it got rid of Pastor Russell as the faithful and discreet slave. Now it was a collective. Mm -hmm. But who was writing all the books? And that continued to be the case until Rutherford died in, at the beginning of World War II. Mm -hmm. And all the books that were published during that period were by Rutherford himself. So it was very plain that although the rebranding of the religion as Jehovah's Witnesses was a smart move to get rid of the name of Russell. And maybe distract from the false dates that, yeah. ha that, hadn't, that hadn't come to, uh, to what they were proclaiming. But even so, the emphasis upon times and seasons was still there. Yeah. When, when 25 failed, it, it moved to, well, soon. And then when World War II broke out, it looked like soon. Yeah. And so Rutherford had at least bought some time there while the crisis of the 30s and World War II was upon us. Mm -hmm. He bought some time. And, and then I think, too, because at that point when they renamed themselves Jehovah's Witnesses, then they also shift a lot of attention to this paradise earth. So steal the promises to Israel, apply them to us, and that gives another people another thing for the people to, to, uh, you know, kind of be pressed forward with mm. a, a new carrot. And of course, the new name meant a lot because not only was it taken from Israel, and then the, therefore the prophetic times and seasons that had been connected to Israel before were cast off. Mm -hmm. This new identity was a good move, though, in terms of reconsolidating Ruther Rutherford's power. Now they were selling his books with this new message than this new name, door-to-door -door for mm -hmm. a decade before World War II came. And weren't they already getting some criticisms that they were becoming a cult and following a single man? Mm -hmm. Because all the literature had Rutherford's name on it, and all the previous literature had Russell's name on it. So I think it, that's around the time when they stop putting the name on the, mm -hmm. on the books. So that, too, was, was a move to combat this criticism. This just criticism. Yeah. That but, they were basically but, the creation yeah. of two men. But all the cults do that. Yeah. So you, you don't find Mormonism called Smithism. You know, the, this it's a good move to switch and, and Seventh-day Adventists. Are oh, not called whitists. Uh, yeah. That's right. And so, yeah, that's theosophy, not that fancy word, theosophy instead of Blavatsky. Yeah. And so on. So yeah, that's right. that's a great move. Get rid of the mm -hmm. the the individualism, at least visibly. Yeah. So when they used to say to me, the reason the names aren't on the publication mm -hmm. is because we're so we're, modest. We're, the writers are very <laughs> modest. But then I thought, even then I thought, well, that doesn't seem to line up with scripture, which is you've got names <laughs> of Bible writers all over the Bible. Yeah, and also it it. It relieves them of accountability. Sure. If you don't have your name, anybody's name on it, you can't point to anyone and say, "Look, what you said is not true. It's yeah. false." You know, it it makes it it more difficult for those who are are looking on to know who's responsible for this. 
But of Not course, even the witnesses know who's responsible other than the org. Uh, except till very recently when the faces become very familiar, too, mm -hmm. so familiar that a lot of people immediately see be behind the veil, mm -hmm. behind the, behind the, uh, the uh, wall of anonymity, they now see men. And, and I'm not sure that's been a good move. No. But they're kind of back to where they were with Russell and Rutherford. Mm -hmm. So the contribution, though, we have to note of the other two presidents who put together this masterpiece of propaganda and a lot of other propaganda from Rutherford era onward. Nathan Knorr, who doesn't, doesn't seem to be an idea man, that is theology, and he lets Freddie Franz do most of that until Knorr himself dies and then Franz becomes the president. But Fred Franz is the, the fellow who gave them their own Bible and that was the completion of the rebranding. They, mm -hmm. they, they so couldn't they really successfully... In, in the Bible, the, the name. For the first 50 years, they had not had their own Bible. They'd used the King James and the American Standard Version. Right. And, of course, they don't have the name Jehovah in the New Testament. So the rebranding took until the 1950s, when mm -hmm. suddenly they were able to justify their use of this name. Yeah. But, but again, it's, it's back to what are you preaching? You're preaching a religion. Mm -hmm. You're not preaching Christ. So mm -hmm. that that is thrown into, I think, focus by a certain text which means a lot to us 2 Corinthians 4 verses 4 to 6 uh, you know 2.17 no? oh yeah let's read 2.17 first that sets it up nicely because yeah. the, the accusation that that they were selling a man's books that fi finally caused them to have to rebrand themselves and then do mm -hmm. it again well, that verse yeah. was thrown at me. 2.17 was thrown at me way back when. Unlike so... And this is Paul, right? Yeah. Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity, like men sent from God. So, yeah, this, this accusation of being peddlers. Well, you know, they'll say they're not peddlers of the word, but... When, when the outside world thinks of Jehovah's Witnesses, what do they think of? Well, those are the people that come around and sell literature. literature. And in the early days, that literature was the work of two men. Yeah. History so, can't be changed. Yeah. So that's what throws two Corinthians four, four to six into, into focus. I think. Right. Okay. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let, line, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine on, in our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So Paul plainly says that if Satan has done a work in this world, and we're all familiar with verse 4. If we're yeah, we right? use that one. Blinding the minds of unbelievers. Well, that's everybody else except mm -hmm. us. But yeah. plainly, the, the good news is about... The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. And so, he is the light. Uh, he is, you know, th that's the thing that I wish witnesses and ex-witnesses would understand, that that it's, it's not uh, a negative <laughs> that Christians speak about Christ a lot. That's what Paul did. And Paul says, this is your, this is the, the means whereby God let you see his face by sending his son. Yeah. So, what well, what's the contrast? Uh, from the beginning, from the days of Russell, they have been preaching an anointed which was not Jesus. Mm. Although you could say that in the earlier days, Christ had much more emphasis than he does now, that's for sure. But as time has gone on, under, over 140 years, the emphasis has changed from that anointed, Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, to another anointed, whether it be one man, Russell, two men, Russell and Rutherford, and back to one man again, Rutherford. Yeah, I mean five when it says... Or eight men today. Do not preach ourselves and and that we are your servants. 
Well, that doesn't really fit the picture of the witnesses. They preach themselves, and the governing body are not the slaves. We're the slaves. We are the, the slaves. The common witness is the slave. You're supposed to do what they say. You have to. It's a life and death. And it's about us. We're to be listened to. We're to be heard. We're the anointed. They're taking the place of Christ. Plainly. Mm -hmm. So that last thought that you just gave us, that he says we preach Christ mm -hmm. and ourselves, that is apostles, as servants, your servants, yeah. they have flipped it so that they're preaching an anointed, not mm -hmm. Christ, who are mm -hmm. God's official servants, and you have to serve them. What an inversion yeah. of the gospel. Mm -hmm. So next time, we'll dive into the, the text. Uh, ch section 1, You Are My Witnesses, says Jehovah. And I think we got some links. Yeah, we're going to link to the playlist, Have They Ever Been God's Organization? And uh, a video that's one of three about uh, being slaves of men, and it's the characteristics of cults. Yeah, it's not just about Jehovah's Witnesses, but you'll just, be thinking yeah. of Jehovah's Witnesses. It's about cults in general. So yeah. next what are time, their characteristics? Next time, section one, you are my witnesses, says Jehovah.